Greetings Minecrafters and welcome to another exciting Minecraft discussion. My name is Kimberly Quinn and I am thrilled to have a chat with you from my kitchen and living room today because it's it's like raw out there. It's March and it's just, but it's so, it's, it's very, it's a snuggly day is what it is. So I'm excited to have this discussion on belonging to you, belonging to yourself. And I was inspired um, actually yesterday by, I, I was had the honor and privilege of of speaking at the Vermont Women in Leadership Conference yesterday in Stowe, and it was just, what an amazing group of women. And the actual topic was hashtag self-care is not selfish. And part of it was got into the fitting in versus belonging, which uh, Brene Brown also does a lot of work with, so I gotta give a shout out there. And I know for me, the whole belong, the actual authentic belonging thing has, it has been like up until now, you know, now I'm a work in progress. So just for some of you who haven't seen the other videos, the fitting in versus belonging thing, fitting in is actually the opposite, the polar opposite of belonging. Belonging is authentic. It's when we're living inside of our frames where the self-value and, the, and the, our authentic power, our original, our original worthy, worthiness feelings, all of that authenticity is in our own frame. The, the fitting in thing is is the opposite because that's ego driven not not driven by the authentic self the fitting in means that i am adjusting and adapting myself to fit in with whatever conversation is going out on out here externally with whatever the group with whatever's going on with the group i'm molding myself to fit in with that even if it's really really subtle because sometimes we think oh that's so teenager and yes, it is, and that's developmentally appropriate for them, actually. Yet we can still, as 30, 40, 50 something, 60 something, 70, 80, 90 somethings, okay, we can still occasionally slide into that by sliding out of our own frame. And it can be in subtle ways. It can be we're, we're in our professional, you know, work environment and they're talking politics or vaccines or, or you know, baseball or whatever they're talking about. And it can be a subtle adaptation where we, we take on a different tone you know, we don't have to fully change our view though that can be the case too but we wouldn't maybe fully stand up and say what we would have you know it's just it's that kind of fakey fake like we're, we're pretending to, uh, something I don't know but that that's a fitting in that's a you know I have my posse and I fit in with this posse this group and it, it, though it is very teenager in some senses it doesn't go away because of this this need that we have right and so Anyway, so we have the authentic self and the, e the evil twin of the authentic self is the ego. So that fitting in thing is all coming from the ego because the authentic self doesn't need the kudos, doesn't need the external approval, doesn't need that like dope fix of, ooh, somebody threw me a cookie and I'm a part of them. We don't need that anymore. And so belonging is driven by the authentic self, right? Belonging is true sense of belonging. So here's the thing, when we mold and adapt to fit in with whatever the group is saying or doing. We belong to them, but then we no longer belong to ourselves. We no longer belong to ourselves. And I, I actually slid into this. It was a professional situation and it was subtle. It was a, a few months ago and I, I, it's wild because I had some emotion going on. I'm like, what's up with this? That, you know, you know, trying to, you know, fit in with that, with what was going on there. And it, I was kind of irritated for, a little while and I really thought about it and then later later after I processed I was actually grateful I was grateful because it was a, it was a, a reawakening for me because like it's like it's like life gives us quizzes and I thought I'd pass the final exam but apparently I didn't because I got another quiz and I'm like oh thank you for reminding me don't need it I don't need to fit in with you I just don't whatever the the thing that was going on, I do not need to fit in with you. Why? Because I belong to myself. And when we really belong to ourselves, we have also, it also brings about the courage to stand alone, right? The courage to stand alone. And, the, and courage is defined, I think Brene also talks about this. Cur comes from the Latin word, sorry. Yeah, courage. Courage comes from the Latin word cur, which means heart. And in a very general definition of courage is when we can sort of jump in with both feet and put ourselves out there and not care about the outcome. Like not, 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 not care, but not know what the outcome is. Like it's true bravery, just jumping out there, not knowing what the outcome is gonna be. Courage. And also to 
for one to be able to share their story just from complete vulnerability, just honesty and integrity and just full force putting out your story and without knowing what the outcome is going to be, how it's going to be received. That is true courage. And for me, this sense of, of belonging, I'm sure, stemmed from, or the need for belonging, stemmed from way back from my childhood. I mean, we all have a need for belonging, though it, I think it definitely throws a wrench in a, in a, in a child when they don't feel like they belong to their own family because that feels like that should be automatic, right? Like, you, you know, mom and dad or dad and dad or whomever, mom and mom. And, but that wasn't the case for me. I, I, I don't know if, I, if there was a day in my life I felt like I belonged to my family. I just didn't. Um, I just, as you know, the backstory, I wasn't, you know, there was abuse there, physical, sexual, and emotional. The sexual abuse came from outside my immediate family, but still they didn't deal with it even when they knew about it. And that's about the biggest I don't love you that there could possibly be, right? And so the sense of I didn't feel like I belonged in my own family. And, I, and of course, it seems like in midlife is when we look back and we kind of can piece some of this together, realizing, you know, what was going on in the bigger picture with other people and all that sort of thing. But the point is that I, I wouldn't change any of it. I wouldn't change any of it. Not blaming anybody anymore. Did for a while, not anymore. I wouldn't change any of it because, wow, has it been such an enriched, just an, a, a rich life. I've had a rich, rich life. It's such an enriched experience doing the archaeological dig. I have to say, I'm just, my gratitude has gratitude has gratitude. And so, so coming back to the belonging thing with the authentic power, when the authentic self slides back into the driver's seat and says, hey, wait, whoa, I don't need the external approval anymore. I don't need to people please and be a human doing because because I need you to like me by whatever I'm doing for you. And then I, you know, and that's how I get my self worth and all that stuff. I don't need to do that anymore because the only approval I need is on the inside because I belong to me. And it, it was really, I was, some of the women were saying yesterday too, it's, we have to, it's really important to remember that when we, even we make this much of an adjustment, like so subtle with the, again, political views or the vax or whatever anybody's talking about. When we make this much of an adjustment, to fit in with just a conversation, we are temporarily misplacing a piece of ourselves because we can't do both. At, when, we, when we fit in with the group, we then cease to fit in with us. That's really important to know. We gotta return to the frame and realize that I do have the courage to stand alone because I belong to me. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont on a, Northern Vermont on a very raw, snuggly day. Have a mindful day.